Hello space cadets and welcome to Mueller Planetarium Astronomy at Home. This is Zach Thompson, Planetarium Coordinator at the University of Nebraska State Museum at Morrill Hall in Lincoln, Nebraska. Wishing you all clear skies. Today we have a special edition for you in celebration of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day on April 22nd. So let's showcase our beautiful planet Earth using the free software NASA's Eyes. If you look to the right of your screen, you'll see our Earth buddy holding up the web address eyes.nasa.gov. Go there and download the computer desktop version of this for free. Just make sure when you do that you have a good internet connection because this is an updating visualization software. To receive those updates, you want to make sure that you are online. And when you download this, you actually get three things in one. Eyes on the Earth, eyes on the solar system and eyes on exoplanets. We're going to go into them in more detail in future videos, but let's just focus today on getting you started with eyes on the Earth. So we start and go full screen. And the first screen you're going to be greeted with is the home screen. You're going to see a visualization representation of the globe, the planet Earth. There is the day side, and you can click and drag with your mouse to see the nighttime side, and then back again. What are all these things zipping around the Earth? Those are NASA missions. For example, satellites that are going around the Earth right now. They're going a little bit faster, as you see here, just to show you their orbits. But at the very bottom, there's an option to see them in real time. And it shows you the current positions of them and the actual rate that they move around the Earth. But it's more than just looking at how they orbit. You can actually double click on any one of these things that you see that might be of interest and fly up to it. Let's just click on one, for example, SMAP. So we double click, we fly right up to it. And because this is in real time, at the moment of recording this, this is over on the nighttime side of the Earth. So it can be kind of difficult to see. If you go to the bottom right, you'll see turn light on, a little light bulb, and it should make things a little bit easier for you. It basically gets rid of the night, the darkness of the Earth. It puts everything in the same light. You click on something, in our case SMAP, and you look over to the left, there are pop-out menu, and you find that this is the Soil Moisture Active Passive Mission. You can see a variety of things about what this is doing. What is the mission? What's the purpose? What has it found so far? We won't go through all of that today at all. This is just to introduce it to you so you can explore on your own. One thing that might be helpful is as you're looking at these spacecraft, it's hard to tell how big it is. You lose perspective. So there's a, a drop down menu called compare size. And let's compare the size of this craft to a person, a scientist. All right, so it's certainly bigger than a person. What about compared to a school bus? Oh, okay, so this is about the size of a vehicle, thereabouts. But you can do this for anything that you've clicked on just to give you an understanding of what it looks like, just where it is up there in space. You then come back to your home button, your home menu, which is at the very top, a little house icon. Something that's very interesting, if you look to the left while you're in home view, is something called latest events. If you just click on this, you'll go to some recent event on the Earth that has been monitored by one of the many missions. When you do that, you'll also look towards the bottom and there's even more menus of fire, storms, ice, things like that. In this case, we've clicked on a picture of dust being blown over the Mediterranean Sea, dust from Egypt, and you can find out that information to the left. But here we have an actual picture, a bona fide real picture of what the dust would look like over the Mediterranean Sea from Earth, just superimposed over the visualization of our globe. Just to show you all the ways that we're monitoring our planet, this, by the way, is shown in visible light. So this is what it would look like to your eyes from space. Come back to our home view, and you'll notice there's this bracket of menus called vital science of the planet. And really that is what a lot of these missions are about, to better understand our world. The better we can understand, the better we can be better stewards of it, we can take better care of it, but also to see how the planet changes over time. One example is global temperature. How do things change over time when it comes to average air temperature at the surface? Notice here when you click on a data set, it isolates the craft that is bringing you this information. So in this case, this is aqua. 
more information on the left. You can click on this, learn more about the craft. You move your mouse over areas of the earth, and on the lower right, in this case, you'll see a thermostat to, uh, to show you the temperatures in Fahrenheit over different areas of the globe. Occasionally, you might see this black strip. It just represents a gap in the mission. Even though from here, it looks like the eye of Sauron or something, or a cat's eye, but it's nothing bad. It's just a gap in the data. So we encourage you to check on any one of these. It's a way of showing you how things in one part of the globe affect areas of the other. We clicked on another one called carbon monoxide, and the darker colors represent particles of carbon monoxide, a very toxic pollutant. One of the sources is from fires, the smoke from fires. It's just to show you that if there are fires somewhere on the globe, winds carry that around the planet. So you might hear about wildfires in one part of the globe, and in one way or another, it does actually affect other areas of the globe. So if you're on the other side of the planet, it is affecting your area. And this is how we know it. Really, that is what Eyes on the Earth is, is to show you what we know and how we know it. But let's leave you with this, the visible Earth, similar to that picture of the dust over the Mediterranean Sea. But this is a global picture of our planet Earth, a very recent one. This is how it appeared in the last 24 hours, brought to us by the Suomi mission, the Suomi spacecraft. It goes around the Earth, it orbits it, and it stitches together a mosaic. And what can we learn from this? One group of people, meteorologists or climatologists even, use this to see how storms are being formed in one part of the, of the world and track how those storms change over time. You have the option to stitch together past pictures of the earth and create your own animation. Because again, that's what a meteorologist does. They take past data and bring it up with the most current data and get a timeline to better understand who might live in the track of a storm, for example. So you'd be correct in thinking that all the white things you see here are, are clouds, maybe storms. The brown and green, that's the land, and the blue, that's the oceans. But more than that, this is our Earth from space. When you are looking at our beautiful planet like this, you no longer see borders of countries or nations, no flags, just one planet Earth. There might be other planets in the universe like the Earth, but you are on this one. This is our home, the only one we'll ever know. And the reason we study is so that we can be better caretakers of this planet. And that is one of the ideas behind Earth Day, to do your part and be a responsible citizen on our spaceship Earth. Because this is the 50th anniversary, if you would like to learn about ways that you can improve things in any way, in your area, on our planet, you can go to earthday.org.org. Again, this is NASA's Eyes on the Earth. And there's a lot to it. It's a very powerful, free, and fun software. So we do hope you enjoy exploring with it. Please let us know how it goes for you in the comments section or if you have something you'd like to share. Please do so. We'd love to hear from you and how you're doing. But above all else, keep looking up. We'll see you next time.